Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra and broadcasting live from Tulum, Mexico, a very magical place on the planet. Um, today's topic is going to be, we're going to talk about guides and angels and uh, what's being channeled. I think that's one of our members would like what like me to talk about, right? Is that right, Miss Monica? Guides, channelers, yeah. What comes through us? That sounds good because uh, basically that's how everything with fifth dimensional quantum healing started it for me was by being contacted by these being uh, entities identifying themselves as my fifth dimensional guides. So this, if anyone to be blamed, it's the fifth dimensional guides need to be blamed for starting this whole thing. Of course, we don't know where this is going to go, but we'll see what, what's in the store for all of us. Those of you who are on Facebook, uh, I won't be able to answer your questions because uh, we're broadcasting simultaneously from uh, Zoom and Facebook. We're able to do it. Finally, our internet is working out and cooperating. So I'm not able to really go back and forth between the two platforms. So if you really want to be in a direct communication with me, I encourage you to uh, join us on the Zoom. And then um, that way you can talk to me and communicate with me. So let's take a moment and do a meditation. And uh, we're going to do a simple meditation. We've done this before. Those of you who've been with me are aware of it. Then you know what to do. We're simply going to divert our attention inwards towards the source of our thoughts. Follow the source of your thoughts. Keep following the stream of the thoughts and see where they come from and dive into that place. And if you do it right, your mind become quiet, you go into silence. Go ahead and close your eyes, take a deep breath. And dive in. And just relax and um, take a deep breath and dive into this place within yourself. Just let your body, your psyche, your being to melt in its own. Simply being quiet. Simply being here.
Slowly, slowly coming. That was nice, nice and deep and quiet.
How many people felt a deep silence? Wouldn't you want it to be your everyday experience? Like there is nothing going on, does it? When you go into this place. It's like very still. Everything else disappears. So we all do have guides and angels. We all being uh, guided by the inner voice. Um, depends how tuned in we are within ourselves. The, the more you get in, tuned in, the more you become available for the inner voice. And the less you pay attention to the mind chatter, because the mind's going blah, 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 all the time. So, um, My uh, discovery of the um, guides, inner guides, angels, um, of course, all I can say is it appears to be, it appears to be this way. It appears to be that Uh, I'm protected, or we're all in so many ways are protected, we're guided, we're taken care of, and uh, we do receive our, uh, we do receive messages when we're tuned in. And then the guides or angels or uh, whatever entity is channeling through, they at times identify themselves to us as certain kind of group of beings or an individual um, depends, depending on the person. Uh, but we have a tendency to um, individualize it. And when we hearing voices or we're connected to a being entity, um, whatever is the name of the entity. Um, and, uh, and it's good to be in tune and be guided and listen. But in the meantime, at the end of the day, it's also very important that it doesn't become an ego trip because I've seen for some people it becomes an ego trip. My guide, my angel, my guide is telling me to do this. My guide is telling me to do that. I'm more special because I have my guide. So... There's a tendency to uh, ego trip and take it very personal as if 
I am special and I'm better than other people and my guide is better than your guide. So you have to be careful with that. You have to be careful not to fall into that trap. Everybody's got guides. Everybody's surrounded by angels. If there is anything such as that. So it's not like... I'm more special than anybody else. It's basically how tuned in you are into it. But also, let's look at it, that where is the source of all the guides and all the angel, angels? Where is the source of it? Where, what's their power source? Is their power source any different than your power source. You're having a guide guiding you through or um, being touched by the angels, but where is the source of the creation of them? Is it different than the source of your creation or everything else? Isn't it all coming from the same creator? So you kind of have to be careful not to fall into an ego trip because it's easy to fall, in, fall into that. And I always have to remind my people about it. Now, is there, like, even though we're all a part of the grand consciousness, grand total consciousness, and we're all a part of the one, yet it appears to be that every one of us is a this different expression of the absolute. We look different, we smell different, we behave differently, we have likes, dislikes, we're different sizes, nationalities, colors, come from different cultures, and um, consequently, we're different flavors. And um, it's the same thing with the guides and the angels. They have different flavors. There's a different sense of the being. When for some reason you encounter with this aspect of existence. So, but let's not forget that they all come from the same source, just like you and I. They're all manifestations of the same divine self. They're all different expressions of the absolute, like the way we are. It just happens that for some reason, you feel a resonance with a particular type of uh, guide, angel, and they're channeling through you. In my case, in 2009, I was contacted by being these beings identifying themselves to me as my fifth dimensional guides, fifth dimensional entities, beings that they were guiding me. But I also feel like I grew out of it throughout the years. I don't hear him talking to me in that way anymore, like the way it used to be. I feel the connection with the source. But it kind of uh, lost that intensity of them identifying themselves to me as my fifth dimensional guide. That's kind of a blend. 
maybe it comes back. I don't know. But um, whatever it was, it did its job in that, in that time. It definitely grabbed my attention and it did whatever it needed to do as that particular source of 5D guides. But then as time went on and I, and I, I grew and I evolved, um, I'm not even attached to that idea. So you kind of grow out of it, grow out of everything. And your, you, your concentration, your vision comes on the source, her majesty, the supreme being, that which is always here. Anybody has any comments or anything to share or have a question? You feel like asking me or sharing with me? You can either write it on the chat box or you can unmute yourself and we can talk about it. I'm sure a lot of you have been experienced the presence of other beings lot of inspirations, visions, and uh, uh, I noticed there is uh, uh, more openness uh, from within. And I noticed this kind of feeling of joy for no reason. <laughs> so it's like I walk around and I'm like, I'm happy. And uh, <laughs> it's not about um, money. It's not about whatever whatever material stuff out there and uh, and I'm, I'm in a blissful state of being and I will add the word surrendering and uh, so it, it's it's a great state I, I love it and uh, it would be nice that I can experience as often as possible during my day but I understand that maybe the ego thing like you were saying uh, you know there is this kind of uh, dance that I go through every day, uh, every other minute or so forth and so on. But um, yeah, I've, um, I am so um, personally interested in uh, uh, expanding and, and, and uh, radiate more light and love in the collective and, and prioritize that more than anything else at this time of my life right. so, um, but yeah I, I I understand the ego trip and I'm so glad that you brought that up because I've been following or researching different teachers speakers and there is all this kind of ego trip thing that it, it does I feel contrast I feel like uh, that I'm less than them because they have this uh, clear ability to channel whoever, whatever it is, which like you said, everything is God. So right. it's not that we are, I'm less than you or whatever. It's what we think. Right. Yes. Yeah. So I want to just say that and thank you so much for being around. I, I enjoy you so much. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, I appreciate it. Anybody else has anything to share? Yeah. Yeah, Monica, since you brought, you brought up the topic. Yes, of course, I have been a bit confused uh, over the thing I had. I have uh, had since a long time a, a guide who helps me and I, I could ask him for help and he, he okay. would help me. Right. But, uh, now 
he isn't here when I call him. He, but he come uh, when I. Uh, it's a special thing I should notice. It, he suddenly come. I feel it because he he is uh, on a special place in my body. So I feel okay. him. And uh, I wonder about the. I was uh, glad you said you had your guides, but then they disappear. Maybe they come again, but uh, you can't uh, you can't call them anymore. I um, at least I I can't I can try to right. call them, but they right. will not come then. Right. They, they decide when they come. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I guess you can always call upon the um, your guides. You can always ask. You can always put it out that when you're in darkness, if I feel like I'm lost, uh, I definitely ask for help. Mm -hmm. And if I'm confused, if I don't know which direction to go, what is it I need to do? Uh, I'm going through a tough time. Uh, it's confusing. And that's life. It happens to, to everybody. You just don't know what to do. Yeah. And, uh, or you feel lost for some reason. Yes. Whatever that is. Mm. Uh, you are in this crossroad in your life that yes. you don't know what to do. You don't know which direction to go. No. And, uh, or you're going through a tough time or something has happened in your life. Um, yes. That happens quite often to everybody. And uh, you ask for help. Yes. But um, I don't, for me, is I don't personalize it. Like, this is my guide or... No. Um, because I, I, you know, it's, as I mentioned, there, there was a time like, uh, before I started the whole fifth dimensional quantum healing, uh, in 2009, 2008, 2009, I was hearing these beings contacting me and they were whispering in my ears, but I think Maybe at that time, that's what was the deal um, for whatever reason, which I don't know. There's a lot I, I don't know. There's a lot I don't understand because this whole thing is really vast and beyond my understanding. And I just feel like I, maybe I understand very little of it. But in this whole endeavor, um, there was a time that there, these guys, these beings, were continuously contacting me and whispering in my ear and identifying themselves as my fifth dimensional guides. Yeah. But I don't hear it in that way anymore. Yeah. Not in that intensity, not that uh, regularity. Do I hear the inner voice? Yes, I do. Does it identify itself as a being entity? Uh, no. So, and I don't think, I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, I don't really, it doesn't, um, it can happen, it's fun. And if it doesn't happen, it's okay. Yes. Because we're all guided. Yes. I mean, beyond this being, this entity, what's above it? What's yes. Yes. running that, that entity? And so I kind of like to uh, relate and go directly to the source, yeah. to God. It's, it's, that it's that which source. always is here. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought yeah. of, too. Right. So. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're doing a good job. Yes.
Yeah, and you know, there are people that <clears throat> not necessarily, uh, they're ego driven. Uh, I'm sure there are people who have this connection with this angel, this guy, uh, that they're in communication, they're hearing voices, they're communicating with this being that is identifying itself with a name and uh, they're in constant contact. I'm sure there are people doing that too. And I'm sure there's a lot of bullshit out there too, a lot of blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, there's more bullshit out there than the real thing. So, in my own experiences, when I do shamanic healing, I do hardcore, some kind of shamanic work, I a lot of times feel the presence of this Native American uh, shaman, master. And a, a lot of times I've seen it in my vision and I can feel their presence. Like it's really a huge being. That particular flavor of this Native American being. And those of you who've been with me at the workshops or retreats felt it, felt it too. You've seen it. You can see like my voice changes, my face changes. Uh, the whole vibe in the room changes. It turns to be something else, and which is very different than ordinary Zarathustra. But then also I've felt the presence many, many times of my sat guru, Papaji, has come in. I felt Ramana Maharshi coming. I felt Osho come in and teach. There is just like the, um, is it really that person? I don't know, but it's definitely the flavor of that person. So that, that is what I've, I've sensed, I feel. The presence of that person. Also, I kind of feel like it's, things are trendy, um, channeling or uh, this kind of stuff is also very trendy. And uh, right now is a big trend that a lot of people are channeling, channeling different beings. Their voices changes, their looks changes. And I think, you know, again, I feel like some of them are real and some of them I think is ego-based. Some of them is an act. And some I'm very, I very much believe is real, but I really don't have a way to say, you know, I can't really tell if someone's, um, to a certain point, I can tell if they're acting or they're not acting, but I don't know, who am I to say? I really don't know. I don't know what goes on inside someone else or what is their connection to, to God. 
or what type of entity comes through them and is channeling. When I lived in Abu Janya, I was at John of God. They said that John of God, I mean, he had 32 or 34 different entities would come and channel through him and do psychic surgery and, and uh, the work. Different saints, different uh, beings or doctors from the past, uh, they would come through him and do the work. And uh, one time, uh, King Solomon came through John of God. And I remember that day because the whole casa, the entire place was really vibrating. It was always vibrating, but this time it was vibrating more than ever. It was really hardcore energy. And, um, and John of God was, was a heavy set guy. Um, maybe he was a little bit taller than me, but he was heavier. And uh, there were two big men on each side of him holding him, just sitting next to him and hold, putting their hands on him um, just so he can channel the energy of this being that was apparently King Solomon. And the entire casa was really shaking. Everything was shaking. We were all shaking. It was very, very powerful energy. Was it King Solomon? I don't know. I don't have a radar or angel reader that can identify the, I don't have a color ID that can say, okay, this is this angel or that angel. But did it feel like a very powerful presence? Yes. It felt like really a mighty presence. It was huge. It was very strong. Very, very strong. It never happened again. That was just one time. One time that I, I experienced that in that intensity of energy. Well, you know, it may, may have happened before, or, you know, I was only there for a certain period of time. So did John of God change his face or the way his meaner when he was possessed by entities and beings? Yeah. It, to me, it wasn't an act. It was very clear. Something has taken over him. Some being has come through and is doing the work. That I, I believe, because I could feel the whole vibration of him and the way he was behaving and he was walking around and doing things would change drastically. And um, all of a sudden, he would do like things like being able to stick a surgery scissors in somebody's nostril and jam it inside or cutting through people's bodies um, with a knife. So something really powerful was there in doing the work. Because after he would do a physical surgery, a few days after you would see the person in the casa and they weren't injured. So something very powerful was doing the work.
Okay, so. Nice quiet day. So we have a message here from Susanna about could you also give some thoughts about parallel worlds? Um, <clears throat> I believe that anything that we think about or feel as a possibility, they, they do exist. And uh, I feel par parallel worlds exist. Why would infinite limit itself to one thing and just have one kind of a reality that we perceive it as our reality? So that brings me to the conclusion that the parallel worlds do exist simultaneously. I, in fact, I have seen that um, in deep meditation, a deep inner journey. That was a long time ago. That all of these different aspects of myself simultaneously existed. And, um, and it was constantly changing from one thing to another. There was like millions of millions of millions of different Zarathustra, but also billions of other people and other possibilities of different, uh, yeah, different possibilities of different decisions, different direction that uh, things would go. Like one version of you got married, one version of you never got married, one version of you got in a car accident, one version of you lived till age 200, uh, uh, one whatever. I, that's something that I saw in my vision, in my journey. Is it my everyday reality? No. Do I experience it all the time? Uh, no, I don't. But I saw that, that it does, it does exist. And it makes sense. because it's infinite. The source is infinite and it multiply, multiplies itself from every single direction. It keeps going and going and going. as it experiences itself in billions of different beings throughout all this time. Yeah, I mean, who's there to say that simultaneously at this moment, we're having this planet Earth with this reality we're in, and then simultaneously there's all these other realities existing and if you change your vibration, you're raising your vibrations to a higher frequency, then the reality changes and you find yourself into another reality, very, very similar to this one. However, it's different. -ish. Or you, if you somehow lower your vibrations, 
then you find yourself in realities that we call hell. So, and we all experience that. That's my take. So. Very good. On that note, I'd like to uh, have a couple announcements. And next Wednesday, I won't be able to do the academy. Um, maybe we can switch uh, the academy to Thursday instead of Wednesday. So, um, but I won't be able to do it uh, next Wednesday. So uh, let's power out, send me some messages. Maybe we just uh, have our academy on Thursday instead of Wednesday. Uh, this broadcast is gonna be, uh, it's already recorded. So we're going to have it on Facebook. It's simultaneously and then, um, <clears throat> A copy of it is going to be sent to you via email. Those of you who are connected, then you are on our system through Zoom. So we're going to be sending, sending you a copy of this broadcast. Um, we stopped doing the podcast because, unfortunately, I don't have my microphones. And um, so the sound quality has been very bad. And when we've been recording... So we sort of stopped doing the podcast. And hopefully after uh, Amir comes to Mexico and we set up the studio and we got all the, all the um, equipments, recording equipments, we'll be able to do the podcast again. You also can connect with me uh, via email. My email is info at zaratustra.tv. My website is zaratustra.tv. Uh, I don't, uh, as well as the um, podcast, YouTube channel, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. They're all Zaratustra, actually 5D. So if you want to find me on any of these channels, you use Zaratustra 5D, or if you want to go on my uh, web, uh, website, it's zaratustra.tv. Um, I don't have any public events scheduled yet. Uh, the only thing that I offer at this point is, if, uh, is the live training program. And if you're interested in a private uh, coaching training program, which is Designed to take care of your needs, you're welcome to contact me, write me an email, email, and then uh, I'll set up a consultation session with you. We'll go through it and find out about your needs and uh, what is it you're trying to achieve, and uh, we go on from there. It's a three-month program. It's 12 sessions. We get together one and a half hour once a week, and then I will be coaching you. I look forward to seeing you soon. Um, we're going to make an announcement. Most probably we have the next Academy on Thursday. Uh, sending you a lot of love and light and look forward to seeing you soon. Namaste. God bless.